Welcome to this video where I am going to introduce you to Google Sheets. Now this video is for people who are pretty new to spreadsheets. We're going to go over some of the basic terms as well as how to do some basic tasks within Google Sheets. So to create a Google Sheets document you've got two different options. One is you can go into Google Drive and from there you can go New, Google Sheets. And you can even choose some templates or just a blank spreadsheet. That's one option. The other option is that you can go to the Google Sheets website and go to Google Sheets. And from here, you can see all of the different sheets that you have previously made and you can start a new spreadsheet. When your document opens, you will get a blank worksheet. Let's take a moment just to familiarize ourselves with what we've got here. So up here is a toolbar with various different useful quick links to some different tools. We have menus up here, which gives us a little bit more um, in terms of functionality and options. And then crucially, we've got this area around here. Now this is our spreadsheet itself. You'll notice that your spreadsheet is made up of a grid of what we call cells. And we have columns that go along and they're labeled with a letter. So A all the way across to Z to start with, but we can go further from there. And we have rows, which go horizontally. And they're numbered. And a cell is a particular intersection of a column and a row. For example, this cell has the reference B4. OK, so that is cell B4. And you need to know that because later we're going to be using those cell references when we write these things called formulae. It's possible to have more than one sheet in your spreadsheet and if you wanted to have more sheets they would appear as tabs down here and we can add them using the plus button. So I can add an extra sheet and now I've got two different sheets. They're both empty at the moment so you won't see a difference but we can have multiple things. So perhaps if this were a budget we might have a different tab for every different month in a year for example. To enter a value into one of your cells you simply need to click on the cell to highlight it and start typing. For this demonstration, I'm going to create a list of people and their ages. So we normally start a column with um, a header, which is a label which identifies the data or values in that column. And then we put our actual data for the column beneath the header. So I've written a list of names and I'm just going to add some ages for each of these different people. To help my headers stand out from my data, I'm just going to click and drag along and that selects both of these cells and I'm going to change some of my formatting options. So for example, I might make the headers bold, which is quite a normal thing to do. I could also change the background color of the cells so that they stand out a little bit. If I wanted to, I could add a border to this table of data. So I can click, drag and select the whole table. I can go to my border control and I can choose which type of border I want to change. There's lots of different options. Um, but the trick is to set your color and your weight, that means your thickness, first, and then specify what you want to apply it to. I'm going to have a nice chunky border around the outside edge of my table. You can't see the border that is on the immediate left and top of your spreadsheet. But if we were to print it, then it would be there. I'm now going to add a little bit of internal border, so I'm just going to put a line along here between the header and the data. So to do that, I'm just going to select my header, go back to my borders. I'm going to make this one thinner, and it's going to be a horizontal border. Um, actually, I can use this one, which is just along the bottom of the selected cells. So now I've got my name, age, headers, I've got my names and my ages. One of the reasons that we use spreadsheets is that they allow us to sort and search and manipulate the data that we have in our spreadsheet in a much more effective and complex way than we could if this was just in a table in a word processing document. So let's imagine we wanted to sort our data by age. So we had the oldest ages first and it ranked everyone down to the youngest ages. To do that, we can select our data in our table. 
we can go to data, sort, range, and we do have a header row, name and age is the header row, so I'm going to tick that box, and I'm going to sort now by age, and although these are numbers, A to Z means sort of little to biggest, so that would give us the youngest ages first, and we want to have the oldest ages first, so we're going to choose Z to A, which is descending. We're going to add an extra sort column on as well because I've got multiple people that are 16, 15, 14 and so on. So once I've sorted by age, I then want to sort alphabetically by name and indeed in that case I do want that to be ascending. So I want A before B before C and so on. With my options selected, I can press the sort button and now my data is sorted by age descending and within each age, the uh, names are sorted alphabetically. One of the other things that spreadsheets allow us to do is to automatically calculate uh, values based on the data we already have. Uh, now that could be as simple as just adding up all of our ages to find out um, what would be the total of all the ages put together. Or we might want to use a more advanced formula such as to find the average age. Now if I wanted to do that, um, I can just create uh, a new cell label like, um, let's say, average age. And in the cell where I want that to appear, which I'm going to have next to it, I can create a formula. And to create a formula, you start by using the equal sign. And as soon as you start a cell with equals, Google Sheets knows that what follows is going to be some sort of sum or formula. And helpfully, as you start typing the name of formulae, you will get a prompt as to which one you want to use. So I would like to have an average here, so I'm going to start typing average, and it starts suggesting some options, and one of them is average. And if I hover my mouse over it, it tells me a description, the numerical average value in a data set ignoring text. So I'm going to click on that one, and it opens up a bracket or parentheses. And inside the brackets, I need to put the values that I want the average of. And that happens to be all the values here in the age column. So I'm going to click at the first one and drag down. And notice how it puts the cell references into the brackets. So we're starting with cell B2. Then we've got a colon, which means until and then we've got B12. So it's saying I want to sort, I want to find the average of the range of cells between B2 and B12. And then I need to close off my brackets and that completes my formula. And if I press enter, I'll find that the average age for this group is 15. And this is a live field. It will update as I change my cell data. So let's imagine that Andrew has just got a bit older and now my average has changed slightly and let's say that Isabel is a bit older as well. And you can see the impact that that's having on the average age. It's increasing slightly whilst a few of the people in my group have grown a little bit older. Now there's something else we can do here. 15.1818181818 uh, isn't very attractive so we can reduce the number of decimal places that we want to present within any particular cell. And we can do that using the decrease decimal places button here. And all you need to do is keep clicking it and it will get rid of decimal places and it will automatically round the numbers for you. So for something like age, it's probably reasonable to just stop at two decimal places. There are lots of different ways that we can format our cells. For example, we can change our column width by placing our mouse just exactly between two different columns, clicking and dragging, and that will allow us to make columns narrower or wider. For example, I might want to make my age column a little bit narrower. We can also align the text, so I could select all of my data in my age column and I can go here to my text alignment and I could say I want to align it so it's centered. 
I can make my rows a bit bigger as well, so my header could be a bit larger. And again, I could select my header either by just dragging on those two cells, or if I wanted to apply these settings to the whole row, I can click on the row number. That selects the entire row. And I can change my vertical text alignment so that it's in the middle. I can add additional rows or columns just by clicking on one of my row or column headers and right clicking and then going to insert one left or one right, that would be for a column or if it were a row, I could insert a row above or below where I currently am. I can also delete or clear the column. I can hide it if it has useful data but I don't want people to see it. And I can do a number of other things with my columns and rows from this menu. I'm going to add a column so that I can store how much pocket money each different person gets per month. Now the words pocket money are too long to fit within the width of my column, so I could either make my column wider, which is one option, or I can click on that cell and I can go to my text wrapping and I can wrap the text and that will make my row a little bit bigger just to accommodate the space needed for those words. So I'm going to put in some pocket monies for each of these people. Now the thing about money is that it isn't really quite like other numbers. It is certainly numbers, but it's actually a particular type of number. It's currency. So I'm going to select my values that represent money. I'm going to go to Format, and I'm going to hover over Number, and I can choose either accounting or um, currency types. Now because Google Sheets is American, by default it will do that in dollars. However, down towards the bottom there is a pound sterling option. And if you needed a different currency, you can go to more fa formats and click on more currencies where you can get euros, yen, ruples, whatever it might be. I'm going to choose sterling and it automatically formats all of the data in that column with a pound sign and with my pence as well. And I don't need to write that pound sign in. So if I was going to change that value, I can just type for example, four, five, enter, and it automatically puts the pound sign there for me. Of course, when I added my column, I split apart the average age and its value. If I want to move the data in this cell now, I can just place my mouse just on the border of the cell, and I get a hand. And if I click and drag, I can move that cell and its contents, i.e. the formula that it contains, I can just move that over slightly. I'm going to add a new uh, cell to have the average pocket money. Notice again that average pocket money does not quite fit in my column, so I could either make my column wider or I could add some text wrapping. And I'm going to use another formulae for this. So I can see that the average pocket money for this group of people is 19 pounds and 73 pence. Notice that Google Sheets was clever enough to realize that the average was being completed over cells that are formatted with currency, so it has gone and added the pound sign for me. So we're almost done with our little introduction to making a spreadsheet with Google Sheets. There's just two more things I want to show you, and they're to do with keeping our spreadsheet organized. The first one is we're just going to rename this particular tab from Sheet 1 so if I double click on sheet one, I'm just going to rename it ages and pocket money because that's the data that is being shown on here. I'm going to right click on sheet two and delete it because it doesn't contain anything. And finally, I'm going to name my spreadsheet so that it is easy for me to find it again later. So that completes our little introduction to Google Sheets. Um, I would encourage you to have a little go yourself, maybe try to do the same spreadsheet that I've done here, um, and so you can have a little go with formatting, writing some formulae, using borders, inserting columns, and so on. In our next video, we're going to look at how we can make a chart from this data to present it in a more visually engaging way.